of a choice. We have to give it a go. The idea is to use the new hub as a flat surface on which to bolt our bent wheel. By tightening the nuts bit by bit, we should gently coax it back into shape. OK, let's get going. Is it time for the gas out? Yes. Okay. This might seem crazy, but the first thing Steve must do is butcher our beloved wheel, cutting a hole for the new hub. Right, Claire, get a big hammer, we'll knock it down now. There we go. Wind the monks up. With the hub fitted, it needs to go back on the jig, and bit by bit, just a few thou at a time, Steve tightens the bolts, bringing the wheel back into alignment. Fighting. Getting better all the time. It's then we can begin to weld it all back up again. Now comes the hard bit. As soon as we go anywhere near the thin bits of metal with a welding torch, they're going to heat up, expand and buckle in all sorts of interesting ways. If we're not careful, we're going to end up creating a wheel worse than the original one we had. The alternative is to spend £30,000 on a brand new one. And we haven't got that money. This is the moment of truth. If we're going to fulfil our promise to Neil and get the car screaming at Brooklands once more, then this has got to work. There you go, Claire. What do you think of that? Oh, that's not bad at all, is it? Considering how it was before. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of distortion there, but it's not too bad. I think we can live with that. Thanks very much. It's fantastic. You've got to do 150 mile an hour on that now. Yep, don't tempt me. I'm going to get that back to the workshop and straight on the car. The only thing we need now is a set of tyres. Rubber might start growing on trees, but before it's a tyre, the black stuff's going to have to spend some time with Dunlop, being pulled, stretched and rolled into shape, just as it was 90 years ago. The real skill begins when each of the layers is glued into place by hand and the edge is built up. This rubber band is then placed inside a vacuum mould to give it its basic shape. The final part of the process is sticking it in an oven, squirting in water and baking the lot at Gas Mark 4. The result? One set of 1911 racing tyres. But one steaming tyre does not a Golden Ford make. Which is why I've signed on with the firm of Rod Jolly, one of the best coach builders in the business. And as usual, I'm late. These flat sheets of brass are absolutely beautiful. And I can't believe that we're going to actually bear to start folding them and turning them into a real car. It's going to take a long time, but it's going to be worth it. I feel a bit like a Zen monk learning at the feet of a master. Rod Jolly's the person you go to.